Nestled in a small enclave of Kingston's Busy Hope Road is a 1,200-square-foot facility called Bookophilia. It's not just a bookstore, as I was to learn when I interviewed its owner and managing director, Andrea Dempster. What distinguishes your business from other bookstores which are in Kingston? It is always a challenge to differentiate yourself. As you know, you know, you see craft stalls and everyone is selling the same product. You go to buy a piece of pineapple and there's 10 other men selling the exact same pineapple slice the exact same way. And so in this business, the same thing. Books are a commodity. They're at the gas station. They're at the pharmacy. They're everywhere you look. Why would people come to the business is your question. And we think we differentiate ourselves by the service, by the environment, the knowledgeable, you know, the knowledge that the staff has. We have people who really love books working in this store every day, and it makes a huge difference. Um, we also sell, you know, Blue Mountain Coffee. We have a cafe. We have free Wi-Fi. You know, we, we have all the things to make it a lovely place to be. We have musical events. People come here for the experience. They don't really come here for the books. They, they might think they do, but they choose to come here because of the experience, I think. That's been the feedback. And so we keep trying to differentiate, differentiate ourselves by providing that experience again and again and upping the ante. How did this business start? You just didn't leave high school or university and start Bookophilia. I gather you were in the corporate world. Tell us about that transition. Well, I'm actually a structural engineer and um, I worked in the States for a while, came back here and also worked in housing industry. Then I went to Grace Kennedy where I did strategy development and project management. And uh, basically, this came through inspiration, um, a couple of things. I wanted to try my hand at doing something that I loved. Uh, you know, life is short. You can do many things and do them well, but you should really try at least once in your life to do something that you're passionate about. You always see these people who are in a job and you can see they're just so turned on and so fired up by what they do every day. And I wanted that feeling. So books are something that I genuinely love and I decided to try my hand at it. The second inspirational thing was um, basically wanting to change something that I saw that was wrong. Sometimes you see things and you complain about it, but I just decided, okay, I took my godson to a bookstore and um, it was uncomfortable. The floor was tiled, there was no room for him to sit down and choose a book, and there was a sign that said, do not read the books. And I said, this is not right. If we're encouraging people to read and children to read, they're processing these signals. And so, in, but instead of saying, you know, complaining about it, I decided to have a bookstore where people can read, where it's comfortable, where there's a children's room, especially designed for them. And the last part of the inspiration to start Bookophilia was Calabash. You know, the Calabash Festival is in St. Elizabeth in Treasure Beach, and it's in its 11th year. And this is a festival. When I went for the first time, I said, wow, this idea can really happen in Jamaica. It's a huge gathering of people who are book lovers, who are writers, who are readers, and it kind of disproved the last notion that Jamaicans don't read. I said, but look at all these people. So I said, Bookophilia can work. And that's why I decided to step out and try my hand. Miss Dempster dismisses the popular notions that Jamaicans don't have a passion for reading and that those who do are using new media such as Kindle, thus impacting on her bottom line. Now, we, we, think, of, we think of ourselves a little bit differently. We are not here to sell books. We are here to serve readers. So, and there's a huge distinction. Um, if you think of yourself as serving a community, then whatever that community's need is, you then provide it. So we're not sitting here whining about, oh, the Kindle and oh, e-books, what's going to happen to our physical books? We've started selling the Kindle. So we're providing that for our readers who want to have the convenience of 3,500 books at their fingertips. They can buy it here for a great price. Um, in answer to your question, we find that people are reading more. In terms of our sales figures, or, I mean, over the year that we started, we've done, you know, fairly well. And in a recession, you know, flat is great. So, you know, we're, we're happy with where, how we've been performing, and it proves that people are reading. The other thing that we've noticed is people are not only reading, Jamaicans are writing a lot more books. Um, there's a lot more self-published authors. Every month we get, you know, at least 10 books to review that people want us to carry in the store from local authors or Jamaicans abroad. And so that says to me that there's a vibrant spirit of writing and readership in Jamaica. Yeah, sometimes you have um, these things that people say about you as a country. Oh, we're so illiterate. Oh, what an illiterate set of people we are. And you just absorb it and you repeat it and reinforce it. But it's not actually so. So my challenge would be, you know, to everyone to question it. 
Was that so at one point? Is it so now? So don't just absorb it. Our evidence shows that people are reading and, you know, Jamaicans do read. I asked Miss Dempster how she got around the challenges of running a small business, including getting around the bureaucracy. We don't, well, we don't get around them. We've decided to do business from day one, just completely by the book. Um, it's simpler that way, you know, and it's the right way to go. So we just accept that there are certain costs, and when they increase, we accept that these costs have increased. You know, there are challenges that face every business, JPS, there's a cost of doing business. Um, for us, we found ways to, cut, to um, increase our sales, innovative ways, as you mentioned, Twitter, Facebook, being in touch with our customers. We've also found ways to, you know, cut our marketing spend, and um, we just find innovative ways to make it work. Mm -hmm. What are some of the tips um, that you would give to small businesses or persons interested in getting into some legitimate small business activities? Um, I think the first step that you mentioned was registration. Um, you have to protect yourself, so you should register your business name. You should make sure to you're registered as a company or as a sole trader. Um, the second step is to get a good accounting firm or accountant, and I would recommend an accounting firm an individual accountant, you may not be able to find that person next year. You know, there, there may be weaknesses that they have uh, as an individual. An accounting firm has the kind of safety net to make sure that you're getting the benefit of an advice of a, a team of people. And the right accounting firm can give you business advice that will help you to improve. They'll identify where your banking charges have increased by 400% and you need to make a decision immediately. So the support of a good accounting firm is another one. I would also recommend getting some good advisors. Uh, you need people to advise you. When you are in the business, you are so in it that you, you don't have the benefit of stepping back and looking at it as a business objectively from outside. And other people can see that. So definitely don't just do it as a one-man show. Have your board, even if it's an informal board. Um, have your accounting firm and make sure you have your business registration in place. And the, the benefits are that you can operate in total confidence that your taxes are paid, you can go out there and advertise in the paper, nobody will be saying, but book of did they, you don't have to worry and you can just do your thing and you know that you're in compliance.